Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Very good. Today is, say it with me, Friday. Woohoo! Uh, July 15th, the Ides of July. Ah, uh, beautiful here in Santa Fe this morning. We went for a walk. It was very pleasant. Uh, even more pleasant and exciting is the Xfinity tech is supposed to come um, between 9 and 11 this morning, and it's now 8 45. I'm running a little bit later today. Uh, partly because we went for the walk and we went up to the store and then I had to like move shit around in my office so that they had all these instructions you know make sure that your technician can get to the outlet so that there's nothing in the way um so that has been it's interesting to me how much of a contributor to my feelings of chaos mm -hmm. to have my office disrupted oh there's my mother I asked her how she was and she never replied. Yep, she's thinking more clearly. She's feeling better. All right, I will reply to mom when I am done doing the podcast. I'd left my phone on in case the Xfinity tech calls. Um, it's funny because they send these um, text messages saying, you know, reschedule and you know, as all these, you know, press one to confirm and two to cancel and three to reschedule. And it's like I was just terrified of hitting the wrong wrong button and said, please come please 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 come and fix our internet <sighs> yes uh, uh, ongoing saga if you have been following um my phone was not working right yesterday I tried uh tried calling Megan because um <laughs> so so I've answered my question that I posed yesterday of why can't I just run internet through my hotspot Maybe if I hadn't gotten the basic plan, I could, but you know, I got like the most basic unlimited plan I could and uploading my podcast video to YouTube took a fucking hour, an hour, you guys, I couldn't believe it. And it was, I could barely do anything else on my laptop at the same time because it was like hijacking the signal from my mouse and my keyboard and everything was running very slowly and it was, it was miserable. I mean, champagne problems, right? But still it was miserable. I didn't even try to upload to Instagram. Apparently Instagram is changing. Like if you are going from, if you've had a business page and now they're going to teams or something. So that's probably why I can't upload uh, the podcast video to internet or to Instagram. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so then after I finally got everything uploaded, and I thought this just is not a tenable substitute and I need to do the SIPWA board meeting yesterday afternoon. So I called my friend Megan. She had texted me and said, did I want to go for Froze? Perfectly fine. Um, in the evening, Froze or Harry's and our whole uh, trade off balance there is, is it raining or not? Because it's monsoon season, monsoon rains come in in the afternoon. Um, if it's a sunny hot afternoon froze is the thing to do if the rain has come in because we're high altitude desert it gets cold right so um yeah then it's then it was harry's roadhouse and margaritas so i was thinking about it that we were getting together anyway and so i tried to call her because i didn't feel like typing it all out um another minor inconvenience is that i've been using the the text app on my laptop to do a lot of my texting. Uh, but I can only do that if we actually have internet because you have to have the phone and the laptop on the same internet, but apparently having the laptop get internet from the phone is not the same thing. Don't ask me. So <laughs> I tried to call her and my call would not go through, would not go through, would not go through. Then she tried to call me back and leaves me a voicemail saying, Hey, I saw you tried to call me but it didn't ring on my phone. <laughs> uh, so then I had to get on with chat with the Verizon tech and it was one of those deals where 
the Verizon tech was taking like five minutes between replies and, you know, cause they're clearly helping, I don't know, 17 different people at the same time. And eventually after 45 minutes, I got to a place where, uh, they had me re reset the network on my phone and now my phone is working fine. And they're like, well, I'm so glad that, and maybe they are doing this because they said, you are awesome. You made this work. And I was like, yeah, too bad. It took 45 minutes to get to the solution. There was a point at which the person had said to me, um, you know, well, so I understand that you're having trouble with your hotspot. Is that correct? And I said, no, that's not correct. And they said, well, can you tell me what the problem is exactly? And I said, how about you reread the conversation we've been having for the last half an hour during which I've explained what the problem is exactly multiple times, which I think they did. Cause then they came back and said, oh, you're having trouble making and receiving calls. I was like, oh my gosh, this week, I tell you, I'm just hoping that the Xfinity appointment goes well that I have internet. So anyway, I finally got to have a voice conversation with Megan and I said, can I come up to your office to radius and use your internet for this board meeting? And then we can go for drinks, you know, find me a quiet corner and I can do that. And she said, well, even better. Why don't you go to my house? Because, uh, her husband is out of town. I guess I could say husband now, right? Husband is out of town doing San Diego comic con working uh, and they have the big dogs that prefer to have company. And she's like, it would be a great favor to me if you would go over and sit at my house and do your board meeting there and use our internet. I was like, perfect. And she said, then I could come home from work and we can go have drinks. Well, then uh, a wrench in the works is her daughter is having a medical crisis and Megan ended up being home. She said, I'm just, she said, I'm going to have to come home. I've got to arrange everything. And now she's, um, leaving this afternoon, flying to, to Arizona to be with her daughter. And she's going to be there for the whole week because her daughter has to have surgery and all this kind of thing. So, <laughs> uh, she would, so she spent her afternoon like finding house sitters and dog sitters and all of this. And she had to run out and then she came back. And so it was like six 15. And I'd already started drinking her champagne as, as she had told me to do. My board meeting was done. My other work was done. Um, so she was like, she still has cases of champagne left over from the wedding. She was like, please drink some champagne. So I was sitting out on her porch drinking champagne when she got back and she said, okay, so the house sitter's coming over at eight. And I said, well, do we have time? to go for margaritas still. And she's like, Oh, it's gonna be a little tight. And I said, you know, why don't we just sit here and drink champagne and have food delivered? And she was like, perfect. So we had Italian food delivered. We sat out there, we drank champagne, we chatted. And now she's taking off again. So I may get be going over to her house to use internet. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, such is life, right? It's amusing to me. I can't recall if I reflected on this yesterday, but it's amusing to me that, uh, it has wreaked so much havoc in our lives this week, not having internet and having s difficult cell service for these two things that, and I know I sound like an old lady at this point, you know, she came like, Hey, you kids don't know, but you know that I, before, you know, that there was a time in my life when those were things that we did not have. We simply did not have it all. And it's like, and now the loss of them makes it almost impossible for me to work. Um, and yet I remember a time when I worked without those things. I was trying to find a way to embrace it, but it's just, um, it's disruptive, right? So Hopefully after this, all will be back to normal. Um, follow up on, <coughs> excuse me, the game stuff. Uh, I talked at the beginning of the week about, I guess on Tuesday, Tuesday's podcast, I talked about, um, doing the role playing games. And I told you the story about a pit Jennifer dies and, uh, 
my high school boyfriend who was involved in that story did listen to the podcast. I did not point it to it. So I don't know if you listen every day, Kev, or if you saw the descriptor on that one, but, uh, he replied to me on Twitter and he said, actually, let me tell you exactly what he said because he told me, okay. I found his clarifying tweets. He said, wizardry was the game. We sent your poor low level character into a dungeon with a higher level crew. Even if Jennifer had survived the pit, she definitely would have been slain in the first encounter with enemies. She was set up to fail. Uh, and I kind of loved that he told me all of that. And I don't recall if we, if he'd told me before that my character was set up to fail, but it was very interesting having this conversation with Gregory Wilson and some other people, another, um, female friend of mine who is an amazing fantasy author, uh, told me a story saying that she stopped playing games, RPG games. Um, I guess that's redundant, isn't it? Role-playing games when she was 19, when the boys that she was playing with decided to cast a sleep spell on her character and rape her. And yes, it's the fantasy of the game, but it's also a representation of yourself. And we know that people take this kind of thing seriously, right? You know, it's that, uh, it's the avatar of yourself. And I felt so bad for her and It was interesting sharing with them Kev's information about it being wizardry and uh, Gregory Wilson said that he had this epic rant about wizardry and playing it in the eighties and how much he hated that game. Uh, And I will link to his rant because it was an entertaining rant and it's just like nine minutes long. So um, those of you interested might enjoy hearing this rant. Kev, if you are listening, uh, you may enjoy hearing this rant. And um, but it was, it was, it's been interesting to revisit that because I had never really connected that maybe a lot of my current aversion to role-playing games or lifelong aversion to role-playing games may have stemmed from that incident in which I was set up to fail, uh, in which my boyfriend and his friends mainly wanted to get rid of me and successfully did so. Um, you know, and it's like hardly a big thing in the scheme of things, but it is interesting how we do learn aversion to stuff. And, and I mainly am still thinking about it because I know that this has been such a pervasive experience for, uh, women and non-binary, um, non, uh, heteronormative people in the science fiction and fantasy community, uh, that, that gaming, particularly role-playing gaming is such a big part of the, um, kind of the group interaction, right? The, uh, the fantasy of playing together and that there, you know, has been so much terrible cruelty and abusiveness that's, uh, flourished in that aspect of the community. And a lot of people are doing much better work to, to combat it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's too bad that's gone on for so long and I'm glad that people are battling it. And I'm glad to have conversations with people like Gregory who are very welcoming and saying, you know, come back and play this game. And, and I think I'm going to try, I'm going to see about playing some of these games because maybe I would like it. Uh, go, Kev also clarified that, uh, the town I mentioned was gold Hill and it was till death do us party was the name of the production company doing the murder mysteries. He says five stars would recommend. Uh, and he also said it's possible he had an unfair advantage in the game as well, since he had attended many times before, as I recall, he was also the only person who wasn't drinking. So another unfair advantage. So, um, let's see. So there's those things. Uh, I've got rogues possession uploaded, uh, ready to release soon. Um, what did I say? 
July 26th, something like that. I should know. I know, but it, it's all uploaded. So it's nice to have these things where I'm not uh, uploading under the wire. Uh, Rogue Spawn continues to sell very well. I did see on um, Goodreads, uh, my assistant was saying that it wasn't on Goodreads and I found it for her, but now we have multiple versions. So I have asked the librarians on Goodreads to consolidate the editions, but I couldn't help noticing that there was like uh, not great reviews on the new edition. Some of them could be trolls, uh, but there was one on there, like the, the top review. Um, I didn't read all of it. I just started to read it, but she was complaining that there should have been a trigger warning for exactly that section that I was thinking about deleting people. I was like, yeah, but it was funny because she said um, that that was an abusive relationship and that she DNF'd at that point because there should have been a trigger warning for abusive relationships and that she just couldn't read that. And it was like, well, that particular section is an abuse. It's not supposed to be uh, a relationship. It's, it's basically torture. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, it, no, 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 it's not an abusive relationship. It's being kept captive by hostels who torture you. Um, so maybe not a close reader, uh, maybe a troll. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, if you have never reviewed uh, Rogue's Pawn on Goodreads and you feel like saying something nice about it, uh, on either edition. I assume they'll blend together and so that will that will help. But I do think it's funny because it's like ugh. now I'm back to thinking maybe I should have deleted that scene but it's really important for her character. Uh, it's important for shaping what happens later and so when I did look at deleting it and having it be like just flashback and all that, it would have been really hard to disentangle at this point. And I know that a lot of readers feel the same way and I don't blame them a bit for it, but for prisoner of the crown, that prisoner of the crown starts out with, um, her early life and how, you know, how she was basically set up to be a victim and then how she's victimized in her marriage. And all of this is, about how this changed uh, changed her family and ultimately brings about the downfall of an empire because she was they picked the wrong girl to victimize um, and I understand people hesitating to read that first book but yeah it it's what shapes her character so funny and what else? I'm, I'm making good progress on shadow wizard. I'm having a lot of fun writing Jadron. Um, I'm, I'm liking Sally too, but Jadron in particular is a really interesting character, isn't he? He's one of those characters, by the way, if you have read the bonds of magic books, when he appeared on the page in bright familiar, basically when he stepped out of the carriage, I did not know what was going to happen in that scene. And when he stepped out of the carriage, it was like this character who had decided he wanted to be part of these books and um, total surprise to me. And uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying delving into exactly what his deal is. And I've been listening to the audiobook of Bright Familiar, and then I'll finish the, then I'll read the, listen, read the audiobook of Great Magic. So getting those things done and hoping to get a lot of stuff cleared out of my office because, oh, as I started out and probably didn't finish saying, uh, my office is utter chaos. Um, in part because, like, the modem and internet connection was all behind bookshelves. So there's like books everywhere. And I also have to mail out a whole bunch of stuff for CIFWA. Um, and I have a whole bunch of stuff for a polycon. So I'm hoping this weekend to like put my office back into order and then I will feel like, um, it makes a big difference for me. I, I, um, I wouldn't say I'm a scrupulously neat person, but I am like a clean desk person and I am a non cluttered organized office person. And, um, yeah, 
deep cleansing breaths, right? On that note, I hope that you all have a wonderful, relaxing, fabulous weekend. And I will um, talk to you all on Monday, possibly with internet. Uh, you all take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>